so since morning we've been hearing everything about OTTs and uh, you know how there are so many audiences who are consuming video, platforms know what they're doing, uh, you know the marketing companies are sort of, you know, they're running behind brands, audiences through content. But you know nobody's been really talking about content, what are people watching and who is creating that. And you know I think uh, you know, we'd like to focus on what, who and what are the opportunities for content creators, where do the creators fit into this ecosystem. Uh, we have a bunch of creators that we've seen in the last few, uh, last three or four years that have emerged on YouTube, Facebook, you know, those self-taught, uh, you know, creators like Saurabh Pant or professional comedians who've sort of, you know, gotten their act in place, just a combination of live events and, uh, uh, and you know, content on digital. But, you know, there have been certain exciting uh, stories that have happened in the content space too. And while there are so many stories that haven't worked, I think we should talk about the key learnings that you've gotten from the experiences that, you know, the panel has had. And how can we use that experience to figure out our strategies? Uh, just, I'll just take, you know, one more, you know, minute to talk about some two, three things that have emerged in the last, uh, you know, few weeks and two years. You know, I came across a short film in 2015 made by Navjot Gulati, who was a struggling writer in Bollywood. And he was frustrated because his, you know, his scripts were being written but never getting made into films. And he made a film called My Best Girlfriend. And, uh, yes, Tarunai. So that uh, struggling film writer made a short film called My Best Girlfriend. He pulled favors, made for some 40, 50,000 bucks and it became the most popular short film in 2014-15 and I think it got some 12-13 million views with no promotion and he uploaded it on his channel and he was the only subscriber. So that was an interesting sort of, you know, blip. The other thing that happened recently was the short film called Chutney that was funded by a brand, Royal Stag, and it recently crossed 100 million views. And the lady who directed that short film was Jyoti Kapoor Das, who's also been trying to make a feature film since the last 10-15 years but she got this opportunity to make a short film and sort of it, it viraled. The third experiment that, you know, I was part of was, you know, we released a Tamil original series on Hotstar a few weeks ago. And uh, that was actually made by a Tamil filmmaker who got discovered on YouTube. He went on to make a Tamil feature film and then came back, used his money to start an episodic series, which then we encountered and then we acquired. So that was, that's also done really well, Tamil original series by a filmmaker. Fourth, obviously, you know, Amazon releasing Inside Edge is an interesting uh, development. It sort of kickstarts their, uh, you know, for original content in India. And these four models, examples tell us four different models, right? So the first one, Navjot Gulati was a self-funded 50,000 rupee piece of content. Second was brand-funded Chutney, Royal Stag, couple of lakhs. Third was a Tamil original series, couple of lakhs, but semi-funded by the director himself. Fourth was a commissioning model, which is obviously, I, I believe, couple of crores. So given this context, uh, I'll start with you. You know, what do you think are the learnings in the last two years that you've sort of encountered between your experiences? And where do you think is the opportunity for creators going forward? Check. Yeah. Firstly, let me give, start with a disclaimer. <clears throat> I'm uh, not an expert. I don't know much, which I suspect is true for everybody in this building. Absolutely. But I will give you my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> my personal learning is that, <clears throat> first, just to take from what you said, it's interesting that the people who crossed 100 million views on YouTube were, not, were struggling, really struggling to get their films made for get released. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's kind of underlines my my uh, impression that <clears throat> films, television, and uh, internet, the platforms kind of dictate the kind of entertainment that will get produced. Forget what will work or what will not work because the scales are very different. Television and films <clears throat> are for group viewing. Internet is individual viewing and that makes all the difference, I feel. Um, so subjects that will work like, uh, for a lot of individuals, enough to become a mass, a hundred million, right? Yeah. But these are all hundred million individuals. People are yet to wake up to see that 
okay, if I was to release this in, in, uh, in a theater, so many people would come. So, <clears throat> um, right now, a lot of people who have the money to make the shows uh, on internet are kind of going towards the same stories, but with violence and uh, abusive language and sex. Thinking that's what the digital content is, I, I don't think so. You know, I think, uh, I, I haven't seen the films you spoke about, but I don't think that's none what their the USP man. would be. Yes, none of the uh, but what is interesting is that <clears throat> new creators and new stories are possible now. That's my learning because uh, we as Monozygotic, uh, we were always known for reality shows and non-fiction uh, content, but we were able to produce uh, uh, Aisha, My Virtual Girlfriend, which has done quite well, won many international awards and done well for the platform. Um, similarly, I feel a lot of um, unconventional people who are struggling in films and television will find their voice on digital. That's what I feel. True, absolutely. Monica, your experiences... Sorry, I've lost track of the question. No, so, question? so okay, so question one is, given what's happened in the last two, three years, right? Uh, do you have a sense of where the opportunity lies for creators, whether from Bollywood or not, from wherever? I mean, is there like, a, do we have a little better sense of, okay, maybe this kind of strategy by a creator will find more success and acceptance on the internet? Or is it still very TV and film centric? See, honestly, I feel that we have only just begun, you know, closer. where this, sorry, can Little closer, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was saying we've only just begun. So anybody who uh, claims that they know it all or that they have figured it out is actually just talking through their hat because it's not possible. It's a very, very nascent space. And yet as we speak, you know, it's so rapidly evolving, unlike any other media platform that we've seen, where it took uh, television several years to, you know, sort of evolve and develop into a formula, reach out to a certain number of people. And cinema, as we uh, see, you know, there are, we, we all know what the formulas have been in cinema. Some of them are being broken now, but more are coming, you know, if you have a star, then he will do certain kinds of films and every director will want to use him for what his USP is. In that sense, I feel digital is such an exciting and, uh, you know, formula breaking medium. What was, in fact, last year's fresh idea, you know, is already today's formula. You dare not repeat it because people are judging you, judging you all the time and they are getting such a delusion there's a tsunami of content out there and uh, people have a range to pick from so you know as as creators as people who are commissioning making on both sides of the chain of the fence rather and people who are distributing as platforms it's evolving so rapidly oh i'm so sorry i thought i put it off sorry disruptive content i'm really <laughs> totally <laughs> So, so yeah, so uh, basically it's uh, evolving so rapidly that we are all learning, we are all learning and we are all finding our way with every piece of content that we make, with every idea that we, you know, uh, sort of curate, work upon. So between creators, between platforms and the talent out there, even, even the, uh, the, whether it's the writing talent, the, the directors, the artists, the whole lot of... Uh, Bollywood artists who actually are now waiting between, I mean, who've traditionally been waiting between films and not getting the right kind of scripts are realizing the value of what, you know, a good series can do for them. Like we did It's Not That Simple with yeah. Swara Bhaskar. It was really, I mean, at that time, nobody was programming for A, women, largely the shows that were being made till uh, last year were for boys, uh, you know. Uh, young, urban, boys, comic capers, and we chose to program a show, you know, to make a series which was for ca catering to the mature female audience, a very disruptive subject of actually justifying an affair within a marriage, but not, but done very tastefully for the right reasons, you know, if, I don't know how many of you have seen it, and I'd like to recommend you guys to watch it to see that we moved away from the so, you know, the boys' space, the comic capers, to doing a serious, uh, you know, subject, right. which, which was thought-provoking, and it worked brilliantly for people. 
you know, so uh, we cannot say that this will not work or that we know it all. With every content piece, all of us collectively are experimenting and I think which is a great space to be in and we'll all keep doing it for a while. Right, so going forward, do you have an age demographic that you think is important to look at for digital? Now, I mean, given your experience of last one year with originals, is there any? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. For us, uh, actually, it uh, is 18 to 30 as the core TG that we look at. You know, uh, people who watch uh, uh, digital series are actually uh, not the college-going audience. Uh, they watch a lot of short-form content on YouTube and, uh, you know, because they were sampling some stuff, it, it's, it's uh, you know, there was a misconception that you are catering to a very young audience. Actually, you're not. It's the first jobbers that you're catering to. You're catering to people who are watching a lot of international content, uh, you know, who are watching niche cinema, and, but who are not getting, uh, they've already moved away from television, so there is a large number of audience, actually roughly about uh, 10 million now, who's moved away from traditional TV. They're not seeing that content, but are actually actively looking for stories which talk to them, that are of their context. So they're seeing a Narcos, they're seeing, uh, you know, uh, GOT, they're seeing, uh, uh, you know, a whole lot of, I mean, I don't want to go into that. Narcos the, to the Nagin is what I saw in the earlier presentation at Old Balaji. Narcos to Nagin is the gap of the audience. That sounds very, yeah. that sounds very fancy, but <laughs> that's not the truth. Yeah, all these things make for headlines, but yeah. But they watch, they're basically watching a lot of international content and they're loving the scale and everything, but the stories uh, emotionally, they don't engage with those characters, those stories. All of us want, we are looking for some answers through our content. Our life answers, uh, answers that, you know, whether, whether they are our family situations, our work situations. So that is the space I feel that the digital space right now, it started with tapping that more and more, it, it's expanding to larger stories in that context. So I really feel that we are creating content for that growing and very rapidly growing segment which has moved away from TV, which is watching your niche cinema, watching international content, but looking for stories that talk to them. So we at Wood right. clearly are programming. So I'll come back to the talk. language bit a bit later. Yes. So I want to now get to Amrit Pal. So he's sitting in a very sp sweet spot. He's found the pot of gold that most people, you know, struggle to find in the content business. He's doing everything with all the big guys and, you know, so why don't you tell us a bit about what's keeping you busy now, your experience with Y Films and how you're, you're sort of dabbling between feature films and digital. And Woot. And Woot. <laughs> thanks, thanks Siddharth, thanks for that lovely intro. Uh, so yeah, we're really excited because uh, we at Still and Still Media Collective, my partner Anand and I, uh, we're actually working across all three formats. We're doing films, we're doing television and we're doing uh, digital. Uh, so yeah, we started out uh, with uh, a show called Bang Baja Bharat uh, for Y Films, which was, uh, I think, the third or fourth web series in India yeah. uh, at that point of time. Uh, and today there are probably 3,000 and 4,000 and 40,000. Uh, so it's been, it's been really exciting to be part of uh, this entire experience. Uh, and, you know, just to kind of bring it down to something very simplistic, which I think all of us here will believe, you know, believe in when you ask for a learning or an experience. Uh, is good storytelling and that just can't ever be supplemented, complemented or replaced. Uh, you know, and analytics are great. We always laugh about it because we work with so many platforms and we think that Google is making an absolute fool of all of them because everyone thinks that they know what the right demographic is. They know the exact right kind of things that everyone is looking for. So it's really exciting for us because our platform is so convinced that we have to have to do a 10 minute piece because you know, after 12, no one has any kind of attention. The other person is equally confident that nahi boss, minute ka to karna hai. Otherwise, the, uh, the content consumer feels they've not seen enough of the material. So the truth is, actually, it's a great time today because nobody knows anything. And till that stands, <laughs> I think we can do a great job of continuing that. So really, if there was one thing that I would say, that is the only thing that we as content creators can focus on and then hope for the best. Of course, analytics are important. I'm not in any ways uh, trying to demean it. But they can only assist and only enhance great content. They will not be able to supplement uh, good storytelling, which has to, has to, has to be at the key, to, key of everything. Whether you're doing a two minute non-fiction piece, you're doing a feature length movie with a Shah Rukh Khan, or you're doing a 10 minute uh, web series with five episodes uh, for a particular OTT platform. 
Right. Uh, we'll come back to uh, sports. I'll just uh, skip to Tarun first. So you guys are with the, the big guys, with the big money. Uh, you know, you can drive content in a different way. So learning trends that you think so will I'm, shape. You know, actually the good part of digital is that you don't really need money to be the only thing that drives you. On YouTube, yeah. yeah. Uh, you've given us some ample examples of people with no money Absolutely. but great ideas who've made it big. So that's the fundamental starting point of True. digital. But I also think that, you know, we are in that kind of space where, you know, when we guys moved from single screens to multiplexes, multiplexes only came into big towns and into top end towns. And so we thought there was an A type of a multiplex audience. And then as multiplexes started to proliferate downward into the smallest town of the country, everybody became the multiplex audience eventually, right? And that's where I think the internet is. Uh, the last nine months because of geo, uh, the, the gamut and the profile of the audience is completely changed, right? And every single month we are adding uh, consumers at five rupees a GB or 10 rupees a GB into this game. And, and that profile that we started with, like she said, six months ago, nine months ago, a year ago is very, very different today. And it's going to continuously evolve. So, uh, you know, that whole what movie works at the multiplex won't work at the single screen and what works at the single screen won't work at the multiplex is starting to fade away uh, on cinema. And that is going to eventually fade away uh, onto digital. But I think, you know, as a creative person, I can tell you this is the best place to be in. Um, I'm, you know, a lot of, uh, lot of what I do was, has been television or radio for some time and people told me, can you come and do some more television? And I flatly refused. I said, you know, I can't do more television. Primarily because I think your ability to innovate has just gone. Uh, you know your target audience so well that you, you dare not do anything different for that target audience. Right? Uh, and it's unfortunate, but that's, you know, you can, people will pull 100 pages of research, quantity and quality onto you the minute you give them a different idea that should be done on television. And yes, you know, that's an old audience, the rural audience came in, the, the urban audience came in and all of that. This is an evolving audience, right? And that evolving audience, like you said, nobody knows anything about. Uh, really, you know, everybody learns a new trick every day. And that allows creative people some amount of leeway to do newer stuff and to be able to feel that you've done something new, something exciting and feel fulfilled at the end of the day. Right? I don't think any of us are going to make path-breaking stuff like Narcos for some time to come. Right? Uh, until this audience evolves and, and stabilizes to what it becomes and, and things start to pan out, we won't do that. But the journey will be so enriching that we would have actually got the opportunity to do many different things by the time we get there. And, and we learn by, you know, on that way. Right. So what's your sense on a regional content, which is, and on regional, two sort of, you know, you know buckets. One is the low cost and premium regional. You think there's a market there for digital to reach out to because regional TV is very, very sort of formula driven like Hindi is. And I mean, is there any opportunity there? And I'll give you an example. Uh, are you regular on Netflix or are, are people regular yeah. on Netflix? So what, there's a, there is a really good Hispanic series that has actually now done very well on Netflix over the last few weeks. It's called El Chima. It's actually out of a uh, Hispanic network in the US uh, and it's dubbed into uh, English, subtitled into English and it's, uh, it's actually a takeoff of Narcos. It moves forward from where Narcos leaves into Pablo Escobar's uh, story in the US and how he supplied the drugs and all that. That's a proper Televisa, Telemundo type of regional Hispanic series that has done well. Why is it done well globally? Uh, because like Monica said, it connects with the people out there, right? You can, when you see that series, you can see an average underdog's story out of greed, lust and all of that getting somewhere, right? It's a, it's a human story with lots of emotion. It may not be seen well on traditional television in India, but it can definitely be, you know, seen by audiences which are wanting to experiment. And, and I think the movement to digital will all, is currently happening with the early adopters. Early adopters lie both in Hindi as well as in regional and, and there are enough people who are more comfortable with their regional language than they are with Hindi, right? So especially down south, east and some part of west, right? And I think they will adopt 
a lot more regional content on digital, unlike what we think. Uh, and like the Hispanics the world over, they probably will end up being global series eventually if they can make the cut. Yeah. And I mean, Dangal has made it regionally, uh, sorry, uh, globally on digital across the world. It's just because it's a great human story. story. Yeah. That's all it is. Absolutely. I mean, the Chinese are, you know, it's are sobbing better, watching it. It's yeah. done better business in China than yeah. India. So that just shows how content travels. So correct. Shows actually that made in India is better than made in China. <laughs> that too. That yeah, Modi will so love you for that. Coming to you, Subhayu. Uh, so sports, right? You guys uh, license sports content. How's that been for you in India? Any share your experiences, learnings, trends? Right. So I'm the misfit in this panel. Amongst a group of storytellers, I'm the plumber. What we do is we take sports content, we syndicate it across the globe, multiple sports, etc. The the one point where I find a lot of commonality between what you guys are saying and what my learning has been, more as a consumer than as a seller, has been you're trying to find out the point of resonance, right? At the end of the day, you hear a story, you connect to a story because it resonates with your motivations and your values. That's the reason why a sexy, sexy, uh, Kamwali Bai sits on the floor and sobs at the same serial that has a sec A plus Malkin sitting on the couch and sobbing away too, right? So demographics is maybe not the best parameter to judge. In sports, what we see is a lot of Indian broadcasters. We have two major sports broadcasters. What they do is they pay a lump sum for the rights and they show you the live match. The day after the live match, you'll have the wickets, catches and uh, the misses. The day after, you'll have the highlights and then the day after, you'll have the replay. Abroad, what happens is, uh, let's take, for example, a major European league. Matches happen on Saturday and Sunday. Your team has won on Sunday, so you're extremely happy, you've gone yourself drunk. Uh, if, it, if, if your team has lost, you're extremely unhappy and you've gotten yourself drunk. Monday night on Sky Sports, you have Gary Neville and Gamie Carragher telling you what went wrong. So that's Monday night football. On Tuesday, they tell you which were the best players in the last weekend. On Wednesday, they tell you if you're playing Fantasy League, which are the players that you should choose. This element of magazine programming is again that point of resonance because as a fan of a sport, I'm not a fan for the weekend. I'm fan for months and years altogether. I mean, Arsenal fans here would testify. We remain fans despite everything. Now, if, if that is the thought process that you're trying to latch onto, right? That magazine program has the same set of beliefs and thoughts behind it as whatever you're talking about, the fresh set of eyes that kind of breaks the formulaic approach to content creation. Right. Mr. Raghu, uh, you know, what's your sense on non-fiction content on digital? I mean, you've been you know, dabbling both worlds. Yeah. And uh, I think non-fiction, we are a lot uh, less clear about our confusion about non-fiction compared to fiction. Um, see, it's important that, say, there are two points of view. One point of view is that what can work on television can also work if you can't watch it on television because it comes with its set of restrictions maybe. Maybe it's an appointment viewing or whatever. It's pushed content. You pull it when, when it's convenient to you. There's another school of thought that says that what works in television is necessarily for a family audience. This is for a personal audience. Maybe, you know, you have to tailor make it for that. As far as reality shows and non-fiction is concerned, I'll talk about reality shows since I know a little more about that. Um, we're yet to come up with uh, something that is native to digital. We had to come up with something like that. We at Monozygotic are working uh, towards it. I'm sure a lot of other people are. Um, but I think uh, the USP of reality shows are that they're edgy and um, for a younger audience, I think that's, that should be a natural crossover onto the digital uh, audience. Um, we really think that I think a lot of experiments will happen with interactivity or live now that uh, the digital kind of uh, provides that. So I think uh, in the next 12 months, uh, some interesting, at least two or three interesting uh, non-fiction shows should come out, at least one of them by us, and uh, hopefully, let's, let's see. Right. Monica? Can, can I just, yeah, sure, yeah just respond to that? Just to finish, I have no idea about what's going to happen with non-fiction in India. This is some, this you is just don't know, but I think, yeah, you know, No I think idea. Sorry, continue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, since we have a lot of uh, non-fiction and reality content, being yeah. an ODD platform from the network, I can just 
tell you that uh, it does brilliantly well. A large chunk of audience has moved to watching, consuming those shows on digital. But having said that, in the original space, to yeah, create a point. digital yeah. only reality property, it's a slightly tougher proposition because that kind of content doesn't really have shelf life. True. So when you create a fiction original, uh, you know, it has a much longer shelf life, but when you're creating a non-fiction original, it just lasts you, it's, it's like bursting a big cracker, right? So it lasts you till that point, you know, you consume that content, and then you have to wait for the next cycle to emerge. Whereas the consumption for a, a fiction series is on a continuing basis. Right, absolutely. Yeah, so. So, yeah, the, the challenge is engagement on content that people are not aware of. So TV will make them aware of something, so they consume it on digital. But if it's native digital, I mean, if I if so I can just uh, you know, uh, uh, since Raghu's here, Brody's, which he started with, and then you know, uh, this show has continued on right. uh, uh, MTV. The kind of numbers and consumption that we see actually uh, parallels television, exceeds television. Same with Big Boss, we did similar numbers as you know, Gaurav had shared earlier in the day also. Right. So uh, there's a huge, huge consumption uh, that audience gravitates to watching that content on digital, but original is something where we will really have to find our ground. Right. So, you know, going back to what Raghu and, you know, Amritalo was basically saying, right, the most important thing in any content for stickiness or engagement is story, right? Uh, but when you're showing content for free on so many platforms, you are, you know, the audience is not paying, brands have to pay. Now, does that alter the kind of content then you would want to tell on a platform because you need support from brands and does brand integration become more challenging to tell a story in its best way? Is that a big hurdle or how do you, you all deal with that? See, brand integration is very important because yeah. yes, you want, uh, you know, uh, someone to, to pay for it. Yes, you, you want a model to pay for the kind of stories that you're telling. But Having said that, I mean, I can speak for our platform. We've not at all limited ourselves with that. We have actually gone ahead and uh, invested in creating a whole originals pipeline. We did several shows last year, and we are ready with our next slate of shows, which, you know, if a brand comes on, uh, we did a show called Untag with Moto Z, and that worked very well. The brand was at the heart of the series, worked with the concept of the story, but there are series which we've done where we don't, you know, we haven't compromised so on you the don't, story. So I mean, you happily say no at the Not the, at all, and story. in fact, I feel that the market is moving towards, uh, you know, uh, telling stories uh, on your own terms as content platforms, as content creators, and, uh, you know, to get more and more audience to come on a subscription basis. To, right. You know, pay for the content that they like watching. Till they pay. However, but the responsibility point, yeah. is on us as, uh, you know, the platform and the creators to make sure that then we service that audience. You cannot bring in people, right. take money from them and not give them a pipeline of sure. content. That is blasphemy. So for so. subscription I get, I mean, for them they are free of this burden. But when it's free, then that burden at some point comes and has to sort of make sense. Which is why currently, yeah. you know, most of the, I mean, uh, platforms have, uh, you know, and are operating in an award space, but then gradually everyone is going to move, you know, towards getting subscribers on, because when you have to produce quality content, I mean, and it's really, uh, uh, you know, uh, we always, anyone you talk to in this market just throws Netflix, Amazon, and yes, they're the big but daddies. subscription, right. Absolutely, they're the big daddies, and they started at a certain point in time, which is, and their journey has been, yeah. It's you unfair know, comparison. Yeah, so... so uh, Tarun, you want to... But sorry. that's where I think the only place where digital will start to segment. Yeah. That will be the point of segmentation. Today, tomorrow, and day after. Where there will be a certain audience, which will be your, what, what I call, free audience which is what is increasingly even on TV becoming the FTA sort of an audience. And that will be volume audience, but it may not be value audience for you. You will do a lot of catch-up TV and some amount of original content that will have to see significant numbers once digital penetration stabilizes, which will also have to, like Monica said, see a certain amount of brand integration to fund itself. And then there will be the s word audience, which will be very different uh, than the award audience, and it will continue to be. 
and hopefully that audience will grow enough for us to start doing quality entertainment on the s watch space yeah that is probably 18 to 24 yeah. months away on an inflection point of the volume that will come sure. through but i think that there will be enough volume paying audiences that will fund enough branded uh, enough subscription content in this country right amritpal any yeah so i'm I you face that every day I right think so please differently on this topic uh, i think uh, two three things i want to just say based on the conversation that's been going on. Uh, firstly, on the branded uh, content, I think the other thing to give some credit to the brands is that I think today even they are more open to a more subliminal kind of branding than your in-the-face TV kind of branding. Not so like Pass Pass. No, no, not like Pass Pass. So I think that, you know, there is a genuine synergy there that can be worked upon. And then, of course, as Monica said, that once you've taken money from them, it's absolutely your responsibility to fulfill uh, that opportunity for them. But I do think that the brands themselves are also now seeing merit in subliminal uh, advertising then in your face, which doesn't necessarily disrupt your storytelling, but actually enhances it or integrates itself at least seamlessly uh, with it. The Netflix, Amazon comparison. Uh, I, I, I find it very interesting how people miss the most basic difference. Netflix was a billion, multi-billion dollar company as a content aggregator okay. before they started content. content originals. So there is not even a, con uh, Amazon is an e-commerce site. It is not an original content creator. So let's just get the basic uh, differentiation right on these two fronts. On the, uh, you know, and I completely agree with uh, Tarun's uh, segmentation uh, point. I still am a little skeptical about um, uh, the Indian paying audience for content. I don't think we're there yet. I personally don't think we're there yet. Uh, I think Indians traditionally have struggled with the idea uh, to pay for content. I don't think it comes naturally to them. We've seen that slightly with television as well. But yes, I do feel that that will eventually happen. And that onus also lies on us as, as content creators to create the kind of content that can justify them paying the kind of money as a subscription as opposed to watching things for sure. free. And it was a very, you know, most DJs players now make enough money in this country. And, and it was a, it's a very well-paying audience. I mean, you know, on a good pack on Tata Sky, most of you guys are paying 500 to 800 bucks a month. Right. Right. And, and, and Amazon, whatever. And I agree with you, but that's just another business of theirs. But it is 500 bucks for a year. And but subscription numbers enough, are low. For Amazon and Netflix and India, subscription numbers but are I'm extremely sure, low. I'm just Absolutely. saying that the DTH industry created a huge segment of paying audiences. Any average DD, DTH player and today paying is, a premium. Yeah, paying premium. You pay for the hardware first, and then you're paying 10 million, uh, you know, subscribe, paying subscribers. And on top, they have, you know, packs and packs and packs, and everybody's paying it. So, in, you know, Dash 3, Dash 4 has taken paying audience in the country to the smallest village. You can't get even free TV anywhere in the country now. So people have gotten used to paying for their content. Eventually, I mean, they'll have to pay. Yeah, it just, just depends on the when, platform and yeah. the content. It's, if they're interested in the content, they'll find a way to pay for it, yeah. So we're out of time. Do we have time for questions or we end? Indiantelevision.com? Okay. We'll take one question? Okay. Hi. Uh, since all of you are content creators, I am an avid digital viewer. But what pains me and troubles me is that we have a lot of content coming up on various platforms. Let me name it, be a Woot, uh, be a Hotstar, be an Old Balaji, etc., etc. But what troubles me is that I see the same trend, and when I'm uh, talking about content, I'm talking about the originals here. So we see the same trend across. It's about LSD, love, sex, and dhoka. Most of the in most of the platforms. When do we get to see more of the probably the house of cards? When do we see as we are an evolving country? Yes, you have to agree to the fact that 18 to 35 is your audience. When will you create that kind of compelling content that we want to go there again and again and again? Instead of just creating that old school, you know, it's all about, yeah, I mean, love does make a point, sex does make a point, but when do we get to see the house of cards? 
Monica. Where are you from? I, I Where are you hope from? very soon, yeah. We are all working on uh, a lot so of you, great ideas. So you think that there is a strategy in place, of course. That See, uh, House of Cards also came after many, many years. Okay, American t TV used to suck for a very, very long time. There were some great shows. And then, you know, there was a series which came on Netflix and just took everybody by storm, set a benchmark for even American television, uh, you know, at a certain level. So I'm saying that we are at a very initial stage. It's in the last year, year and a half that, you know, people have started sort of talking so much about digital content. The industry is like, you know, suddenly uh, uh, exploding and you have to give it time, right? when there is a certain journey to be traveled, whether it's in terms of telling stories, finding your audiences, just like, you know, audiences gravitating towards a certain kind of content, content creators are also struggling to find their right audience. This is a medium which doesn't, unlike TV, doesn't, you know, go to many people at the same time. It's a one-to-one -one medium, right? So you appeal, like Raghu was saying earlier, that you know, when you have many people individually liking a certain piece of content, it starts getting traction. And like short films that he was talking about, you know, the thing is that when you make a short film, it goes to 100 million views, and that's many people who, through word of mouth, have seen that film, but you don't know how many people of them liked it. How many of them liked it? You know, word travels, people watch, they watch more of that stuff, and then the numbers clock up. But when you're talking about a series, it's like investing yourself into an idea, characters who you live a certain journey with, right? So that kind of content, looking at what's been liked on YouTube, the initial wave of content has been a certain kind, but people are already moving away from that. And very rapidly, you'll see ideas and stories which target a whole range of, uh, you know, people who are coming to watch, the new people who are getting added. So just give it time. Everybody, I think you guys will agree on it. Everybody is working on it. You guys have to be a little patient. Also give creators time. In, in our country, there are barely good 20 filmmakers mm -hmm. who can make amazing films. Absolutely. Are the filmmakers? Cinema are has the been creators? there for so many years and we see the kind so of cinema. So it's a big problem. I think this question should be first asked to Bollywood films, make good films. <laughs> then we'll make good TV shows and good digital content. <laughs> All right, thanks. Yeah, we're good. Thank you, everybody.